Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. There's a very sad truth that we have to come to terms with when we try to figure out how to respond well to a narcissistic individuals. Now, let's keep in mind that with their high need for control, their selfishness, their uh, pattern of entitlement, manipulation, exploitation, the need to be superior over you, the lack of empathy they have, these individuals have shown that they don't know how to do life very well. And in fact, let's even go a little bit further and say that they have drawn upon a, a real sense of pessimism that just defines who they are. Uh, let's keep in mind they have a non-trusting response to the world in front of them. And this is a pattern that's been a, a part of who they are from way back early on in their life. Fear has caused them to have a very strong defensive shield around themselves. The false self is fully in charge of who they are. They've missed the essence of love. They don't have internal peace. Contentment is not something that they're known for spreading very well. In other words, there's a lot of strain and difficulty on the inside of them that they have not come to terms with. Now, interestingly, you and I can look back on our history and say, well, I, things haven't exactly been perfect in my life either. But healthy individuals will look at those kinds of struggles that they've had and, they, and they'll think, well, I still have my own mind and I still have my own sense of responsibility and my freedoms that I can draw upon. Let's figure out how we're going to do this. But instead, narcissists develop a strategy that says, well, <laughs> that sounds way too hard of a work for me to have to do. Why don't we just designate you, whoever the person is in front of them, let's just designate you as being the problem. And it's going to be your job to make my life go well. And as a result, in the midst of all of their strain and difficulty that they bring to the equation, they operate with the assumption that says you are the defective person in this relationship, meaning I have no need for you or use for you beyond what uh, what you can do for me. And then when you don't do the right things, I'm going to remind you that whatever problem results inside of me because of my presence with you is your fault. And so there are two primary uh, uh, elements that they bring to the relationship that keep uh, them off the hook and they put you, while they put you on the hot seat. And those t key uh, elements are, first, they use a lot of projection, and then second, they use a lot of gaslighting. They, they project onto you the problems that they can't come to terms with inside themselves, and they gaslight you when you start questioning them about the validity of where they're coming from. And there are all sorts of tactics that they can use to get inside your head and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and make you responsible for them. And then we're going to see that as they do this, then there are net results that you carry around that show that, in fact, they're still inside your mind. Now, one of the first things that they'll do to get inside your head and let you know you're the problem, you're responsible for me, is that they play lots of mind control games with you. Now, making that simple, we'll just say they tend to approach you with a, a hard agenda. In their minds, there's a certain way you're supposed to respond, and when you know it's, it's self-serving for the narcissist, and uh, you can't do this because you're supposed to be doing that. There's a fixed way that you can think and how you ought to respond and prioritize and what emotions you should have and what emotions you should not have. And then in addition, then as long as uh, when they're bringing that agenda, then they also then go into an immediate invalidation mode when you choose not to go along with their agenda. By that, I mean, if you have an emotional reaction that they don't like, they invalidate it. If you have needs that don't suit their uh, particular uh, craving in the moment, they invalidate those needs. If you have perceptions, it's probably wrong. Or if you have opinions that differ from them, they'll invalidate that. And so they, they whittle away at your sense of internal resolve with that kind of thinking. 
They make it very clear that your value to them is on a sliding scale, if we can call it that, and love, such as it is, or acceptance, depending on the kind of relationship you have with them, is going to come and go very conditionally. Uh, they'll uh, harbor lots of anger. They carry a lot of anger on the inside already. And then when you don't act and respond to them in the ways they want, the anger is just one wrong move from you away from it coming out toward you. And their anger can show out, show up in many different ways, whether it's through rages or openly aggressive anger, whether it's through them being passively aggressive in their anger or just simply holding on to grudges or contempt toward you. Uh, the anger is just an ongoing presence in their engagement style with you. Uh, you cannot reason with them uh, because that implies that uh, that if you reason with them that, uh, that, uh, that you must have something responsible to say. And it's like, no, you don't have anything responsible to say to me. And so why would I want to uh, exchange ideas with them? And so uh, trying to talk with them is, some, is like uh, trying to uh, get through to a brick wall. They have lots of double standards. Uh, and the, the implication is I'm superior, you're not. And so over time, when you're engaging with these people, it's these kind of patterns that they draw upon. And like I say, they get in your head. And, and when you hear this often enough, when you experience their invalidations commonly enough, you begin to, uh, to lose your sense of internal resolve. And that's not something we can afford to happen. I want, I want you to just kind of try to watch for little things that indicate that the narcissist is still in your head, uh, regardless of what your ongoing relationship is with them now. It may be that they're someone from your past, but there are indications that you want to watch for inside yourself that says they've taken up residence in there and we just can't allow that to happen. For example, how many times do you think to yourself that, you, or do you realize that you have become overly concerned? about how you're perceived. When you have that narcissist that just keeps coming at you in this whittling away kind of mentality, you're wrong, you're not good, you don't make sense. Over time, you begin thinking, well, is that true? Maybe I don't make sense. Maybe there is something wrong with me. Or you know that they have gotten into your head and they're staying there, so to speak, when you find yourself being way too easily defensive. Uh, there are actually studies that show when you grow up, uh, that, that when you grow up in a, uh, a very, um, a harsh kind of family environment, uh, your defenses can become so irrational and you carry them deep into your adult years. And the same can be said when you have uh, adult relationships where there's such an offensive nature toward you that over time it's like you, you just defend even when you don't need to. Uh, you find yourself justifying too much or rationalizing why it's okay to be you. Does that ever happen in your world? That implies that they're in your head. Or it could be that uh, another illustration that the narcissist has gotten inside your head, they've kind of taken up residence in there, is your anger becomes way too strong. Uh, let's keep in mind that there are uh, aspects of anger that can be reasonable. We, we refer to it as your assertiveness. There can be times when somebody has come against you and you need to stand up for yourself. But you know that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the narcissist is there inside your mind when you feel like you've got to come on way too strong and you're too forceful or too stubborn in your use of anger, which implies you're just simply matching pitch with somebody who did not give you a very good model to, uh, to follow. In addition, another way that you can tell that the narcissist remains in your head is you find yourself way too self-critical. Uh, it's almost as though when you criticize yourself for whatever failings that you might have had, you're, you're taking kind of a preemptive strike. It's like, well, if I can say what's wrong with me first before they do, then I guess it doesn't hurt quite as bad. But uh, in doing so, it's like they're having too much of an influence on you. Or another way that we can tell that the narcissist is still in your head is you find yourself uh, going too, uh, too quickly and too easily into the appeasement mode, the, appe uh, the people pleaser kind of mentality to the extent that it's like, well, if I can just be the nicest person you ever uh, uh, met, then maybe you won't get on my case. And so uh, the implication is you have to go, uh, to go too far in that direction. Or another indicator that they're still in your head is you find yourself suppressing legitimate thoughts 
and feelings and uh, perceptions. Sometimes you may even become a, uh, a keeper of secrets. It's like, I don't want people to know who I am and what I think and feel because if I do, I'm going to get in trouble. That's the message that the, uh, the narcissist has put in there and it's, it's still echoing inside that mental chamber of yours in there. Or another is perhaps uh, an, an indicator that the narcissist is still having that influence over you is you find yourself being a rebellious person uh, and, and there's no reason to rebel, but it's like nobody's going to tell me what to do. And so you find yourself pushing against any kind of authority, sometimes uh, in an unnecessary kind of way, you're assuming more than what might really be there. And then in addition, another way that we can say that the narcissist remains in your head and their influence stays there is freedom to you feels like something you have to steal. Uh, the narcissist has such a fixed notion about who you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to think that when you decide, well, I'm going to do that, I'm going to be free, I'm going to choose for myself, it, it feels like there's something wrong that's a part of that. It's like, well, am, am I going to get in trouble? And so it's almost as though you're stealing your own birthright to, to choose for yourself. So all the while, the narcissist remains over there in their world thinking, well, Actually, you really are the problem here, and I really do need to fix you and tell you what to do, when in fact it's so essential for you to realize, no, that's part of their maladaptive pattern. That's part of their coping style to make everybody else responsible for the garbage they bring to the equation. I'm hoping that you can decide, uh, sure enough, I, I do want to take responsibility for myself but that's the only person I need to take responsibility for. I don't have to be responsible for what the narcissist thinks and what they feel and how they interpret me. And uh, that being the case, there's a, 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 problem, a strong probability that you'll need to learn how to separate yourself off from them so that their influence is not going to be uh, an, an ongoing whittling away at your resolve. You want to drop any illusion that somehow you can respond to the narcissist or other individuals so that uh, you're going to make the change in them that's going to help you. It's going to have to be uh, from the inside out. You're going to have to uh, take full responsibility for yourself. And uh, I'm hoping that instead of them having this echoing in, in your mind, you can decide on a day-by-day -day basis who you're going to be, episode by episode. You're going to strategize how you can respond, what you're going to do with your emotions so that you can be a fit and decent individual. Uh, the narcissist is going to continue to try to manipulate you and belittle you because that's their coping strategy. But I'm hoping you can decide, you know what? You can do whatever you want on uh, in, on your side of the street, but what you cannot do is I'm not going to allow you to possess what is happening on my interior. Uh, that's my responsibility. I'm hoping that videos like this can give you some good awareness of what you're dealing with so that as you grow away from the narcissist, even as the narcissist remains caught in their uh, patterns, that you're going to be able to be your own separate and distinct healthy individual. That's what we do here on Team Healthy. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. We'll keep more videos coming in your direction. I know that many times it would be helpful if you had a, a therapist that could help you unpack this. I'm so pleased that my sponsor here on my YouTube channel is uh, the people at betterhelp.com. Uh, there's a whole team of licensed professional therapists that you could choose from. If that's a need that you would have, I would strongly encourage you to do so. Many of you have already done so with good results. And if that's something you would need to do, check out the link below the video here. Likewise, we have my classes, my online courses uh, that, uh, that are very extensive. Uh, and uh, each class uh, has multiple videos with written documents and guided questions. Uh, we have um, Ready, Set, Connect, which is about making good connection skills. This is me about establishing your boundaries, free to be, finding yourself despite the controllers. We have my webinars now that are available, and they're on my website. Uh, we have a tab for those. We also have my uh, uh, Surviving Narcissism podcast, my books, and plenty of resources. Narcissists want to get inside your head and make you responsible for them. And in doing so, they twist up your way of doing things. The more you're able to say, though, though wait a minute, I'm on it, uh, then you can uh, sidestep their uh, efforts to, to make you responsible for them. And in doing so, I'm hoping that you can see it, you can claim responsibility for yourself, and then you can move on beyond their um, ill or their misplaced uh, directives onto you. And in doing so, it allows you to be 
the person of peace that I hope that you truly can be.